we were not just in this plain old theater. It, was, it never felt like it was a plain old play. We were really introducing a whole new world to these people, people who had never met a Jew in their lives. It's an emotional train. You ride that train every night and twice on matinee day. It kind of changed the way that I thought about history and also the world. I had sincerity. I wanted to play this girl that I empathized with and had been murdered by the Nazis. I wanted to play her right. You know, it's just something that I feel like I will probably carry with me for my whole life. Those voices you just heard are people who performed in The Diary of Anne Frank, in the original Broadway production that won the Pulitzer Prize in 1956, in the Academy Award-winning movie in 1959, in a touring company that took the play to more than 100 American cities in the 1950s, and in community theater productions in Tacoma, Washington, and Waynesville, North Carolina in 2021 and 2022. There are just some of the voices you'll be hearing on Playing Anne Frank, a seven-part podcast series from The Forward that dives deep into the cultural history of one of the most performed and most beloved plays of the 20th century, the one that introduced millions of Americans to the story of the Holocaust. I'm Adam Langer, executive editor of The Forward. Growing up in Chicago, I was a theater kid. I was in a bunch of shows. Later, I became a theater producer, a critic, a playwright, a novelist. My latest novel, Cyclorama, is about a group of high school kids who perform in a production of The Diary of Anne Frank that changes all their lives. And as I finished the novel, I started to wonder, how did it happen in real life? What would it mean to go on stage and live out Anne Frank's story night after night? I wanted to know how this particular piece of art had touched the souls of those who created it and the soul of the country, too. So I went to find out. I looked for the actors, the writers, the directors, and the set designers. When I couldn't find them, I sought out their children, their grandchildren. I dug into library archives. I poured over hours of audio and video. And what I found was that, for nearly every person involved, the diary of Anne Frank was a profound experience, one that transformed them somehow. When I read the diary, I said, oh my goodness, I know who she is, because it was me. You're going to hear stories of artists who escaped Europe, of how Anne Frank protected actors from the Red Scare in the 1950s, how it showed people a new way to live in the world. Three people standing in a bare room. I can't think of a more touching conversation that I've been part of in my life. You'll hear from people who quit the theater after Anne Frank and never looked back. You'll hear from two actors who performed the show together over a hundred times but haven't seen each other in more than 60 years. You'll hear them reunite as they return to the young characters they played when they were in their teens and 20s. Everybody knows the book and knows the play. It never closes. Playing Anne Frank is a seven-part podcast series from The Forward, produced by Cole Lacasio, original score by Scylla Shaman, written by me, Adam Langer. You can listen to Playing Anne Frank wherever you get your podcasts. 